It seems to me fitting too that it was Independence Day when John passed, for independence was certainly one of the particular hallmarks of this brilliant young man who touched in such a positive way the lives of so many. John, together with his eclectic mix of brilliance and understatedness, well, he certainly knew his own mind, and it wasn't a mind easily changed. As Janet herself expressed it to me, John believed it was easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, and that is how his achievements leave us in his wake. And so we remember too, though, in gratitude, that it was that brilliant mind, together with those skilled medical hands, that perpetuated life for so many others, that did so much good without ever seeking reward or praise in return. We have the surety too that John's good deeds go before him, and as Christ alone knows, there were many of them. And this surety permits us now in faith to have confidence that John is journeying towards his eternal reward. And one could imagine, I guess, that this celestial journey is being undertaken on some overpowered motorbike, tearing up the Elysian fields en route, with St. Peter probably heads, head in hands, echoing the words of Uncle Dare, he may get rid of that damn bike. <laughs> well, Peter of the Keys, best of luck to you, for John Boy will be conspiring undoubtedly with Milo's help to get some celestial Hems copter to fly him and bike and all the gear up and over and past your gates. And he'll have so charmed everyone already on the far side that you'll have an angelic mutiny on your hands if you touch him or that damned bike. <laughs> the tributes in recent days from family, from friends and colleagues. They are too many now to mention, but the common consensus speaks of a kind, competent, compassionate and giving gentleman. However, if you permit me, there is one tribute I do wish to mention briefly, and that is what Janet herself wrote for me. Of John, she explains that in recent days, there has been much made of his age, those all too short 35 years. But as John himself used to say to me, she continues, with his infectious sense of humor, age doesn't matter unless you're a cheese. <laughs> Janet, she describes John as my quiet man who will own my heart forever. He radiated grace from heart and peace from the soul. What beautiful words from the one who loved him most. They expressed the very essence of John more than anything the rest of us might ever say. John, we all know, was not only a doctor and a consultant of eminent medical ability, but also a person of such eminent humanity and care that he was ever ready to share that ability for the betterment and good of others. John's death, it is a tragic loss to so many, an unimaginable rupture in so many of our lives, and especially for you, his adored and adoring Janet, for you, Uncle Dare, for Auntie Josephine, for Peter, Colin, Rachel, Jenny, and all the family. But speaking for all of us here today, please know that at this time, our heartfelt prayers and all our compassion and love are with you. But all of us too must be conscious that as for recrimination, anger and resentment, the whys, the what ifs and the wherefores, however normal they would be in the face of this tragic loss, well, we all know one gentleman who in his abundant flair for truth would be saying, catch yourselves on, for none of these things will bring John back to us. We must all, with all the strength and faith we can muster, avoid such shadows now. For John's memory could never be something of shadow, but only and forever something of light in all of our lives.